things. And the emergencies were common. Mm -hmm. uh, these people were sent over in some instance uh, mm -hmm. without having had all of their care taken care of. And they were, it was a different time. Sure, sure. All right. During this period of time, did you have any, any, any let's say, time off, like R&R? &R? Sure. Like, what, what did you do during your... Went to Japan. Oh, okay. And uh, spent time in Tachikawa, which was the large uh, Air Force base. Mm -hmm. And uh, visited museums, visited parks, mm -hmm. uh, the culture, the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, tried to learn as much about uh, the Japanese, okay. who at that point were not the most popular people in my book because we'd gone through the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, uh, General LeMay mm -hmm. was uh, asked once what he thought about what had happened at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And he said, the stench of Pearl Harbor is still in my nose, mm -hmm. and I can't think about that. Mm -hmm. And I guess I felt about like that at that time. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. How long were you in country, in Korea? Thirteen months. Thirteen months. And you only, did you only have one session when you left country for r and did, did you have more? I think that there were, I've forgotten, but I oh. think there were at least two. Two, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and that was very short, a few days. Mm -hmm. So was, did you work, I mean, you were your office hours, like, like typically? The office number, hours were whatever it was. Whatever it was. Yeah, but it was not like, the fellow that wrote the book, MASH, mm -hmm. was our colonel, but he was at headquarters, and we were out in this, uh, in the um, boonies. Korea, Kunsan mm -hmm. was right down in the Yellow Sea, mm -hmm. right at the tail end of uh, where Korea was. Okay. And uh, he was, uh, I never met him but I knew he was there, and then he was uh, separated, and he went, I think, someplace on the East Coast, and he had a practice, and he wrote the book. Oh, okay. And so the book was, certainly was not like the television program at all. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that was a parody. Sure, sure. So the, the, the kernel of your yes. unit actually wrote the book? Yes. Match. Okay. Yeah, but not of our, not, no, the kernel, it was a commander, he wrote nothing. I mean, that was another story entirely. Oh. But he was at headquarters. Okay. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And he was a surgeon, and okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess he would have been Hawkeye or one of the one of the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I never met him. Sure. Okay. All right. Let's so when um, let's let's see why you were still on base through the week when you had time off through the week uh, that you were there any recreation there or officers club or. Well, there was a Quonset hut, okay. and uh, there was an airman's Quonset hut, and an officer's Quonset hut. Mm -hmm. They were uh, called the officer's club, <laughs> airman's club. And uh, there was a place where you could go and have coffee. There was uh, where, where we would eat. There was, I remember midnight chow was very good. We'd go in where the all mm -hmm. airmen were, because that mm -hmm. was a, the guys that were on duty at night would mm -hmm. go in there. Okay. Um, and it... Uh, it was like a 13-month outing, and then it, the, the only part that was sort of tense was the last uh, three or four weeks when you wondered if there were going to be orders coming to, to uh, extend mm -hmm. or if you were going to actually leave. Mm -hmm. And then we had the Figmo charts, mm -hmm. which I will not describe in this, but uh, it's, uh, it's a chart that uh, designates the, the amount of time left remaining in service there, oh. and it has some rather unpleasant words that are connected to the uh, statement. But anyway, okay. we got, uh, uh, other than that, uh, I became um, fairly competent as a, uh, there was a, there was, if you remember the history of uh, Korea, the Japanese had occupied Korea for 30 some odd years, and that was before the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, come in, invaded Korea, took over, and then put in a school system and put in rice uh, uh, patterns of uh, uh, planting the fields and so on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they gave everybody new names 
and uh, there were a lot of uh, Japanese trained mm -hmm. Koreans there. And there was a judo uh, instructor mm -hmm. who was there. And uh, I, he was one of the workers. And uh, a friend of mine, Frank Petkovets, who was captain, mm -hmm. uh, no, he was a major, I'm sorry. He was a major uh, in the Air Force. And he was uh, uh, the. had the abilities to bring in one of the areas of Quonset huts that we changed into a gym and mm -hmm. we made it into a judo uh, exercise hall. Mm -hmm. And so I became a black belt uh, in judo. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, then on one of the r and I went to the Kodokan in Tokyo mm -hmm. and visited, which was very interesting, and there were people who were in their 80s who were still doing judo, ex judo uh, exercises. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, so for many years I did judo when I came back even. Mm -hmm. uh, injured my knee, my uh, heel and uh, then stopped and never went back to it. But it was wonderful exercise and tumbling and uh, so I remember that. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, uh, when, when I returned, um, Evelyn, who was my fiance, had arranged that we would be married in uh, November uh, I came back November 18th, 19th, and on the 28th, I believe it is, that we got married. Okay. And so then we moved together after we went to uh, we did a, a honeymoon in uh, Arizona okay. stayed with my aunt Titus and, uh, and my aunt Ann and uncle Titus stayed at their home mm -hmm. and then drove cross country got to know each other and then came back and lived the remainder of that tour at Wright Patterson Air Force Base okay and, and our our uh, uh, apartment was just alongside the runway at um, Wright Patterson, so the airplanes were going all night long. And uh, of course, I like that because that's what it was like uh, in Kunsan. Mm -hmm. And my wife Evelyn uh, started to get used to it. And when the engine stopped running, we'd awaken because there was something wrong. But it was a wonderful time, and uh, the experience at Wright Patterson was perfect place for newlyweds to be. Uh, sure. There were hours that were, uh, you know, eight to five, mm -hmm. and there was a laboratory there, and mm -hmm. uh, I had an opportunity to work with other uh, physicians and dentists in the hospital, mm -hmm. and it was an organized kind of approach to uh, mm -hmm. practice. And so, mm -hmm. again, I learned a great deal. I learned mostly what I didn't know. Okay. And so I have been a student all my life, mm -hmm. and uh, very shortly after I uh, separated from the military, I uh, uh, decided to uh, go to law school nights, mm -hmm. became a lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, and then after that I did a master's in business administration. And I started a PhD in philosophy, but I never finished it. Okay. I just didn't have, I ran out of time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, my life has been a, a life of service, I think. Mm -hmm. had a wonderful family, and uh, I had a son that was born, uh, Michael. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he occupied our lives. He has since become a physician, mm -hmm. and then he has two young boys, mm -hmm. Red and uh, Sam Clay, mm -hmm. and Michael married Heather, who's a beautiful young lady, mm -hmm. and uh, they live in Boston mm -hmm. and are happy, and we love them very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know that there's anything more to tell of the story unless you have some questions. Well, uh, let's just say when you, when you got to Wright-Patterson, mm 